Anytime. Anytime now. Good afternoon, years two, years three, and anybody else who is joining me today for our reading session. We'll be getting underway in just a few minutes. So, you might want to get your screen ready. You may want to log into Hello Smart if you've not done so. The username is hellosmart.com. Uh, we're joining as a guest. And the school login you need is 538687. I'll be with you in just a moment, just whilst we fix a slight problem in school. For now, make sure you've logged in. I'll be joining you in about one minute. All right, all right. Hello everybody, sorry about the delay, we had a slight problem across school, hopefully all fixed now, hopefully we're all signed in, 23 children join us today for our lesson, I'm going to read a book, or at least a part of a book called Joe and the Package. I wonder, have you been receiving any packages over our lockdown period, have your parents received any packages? When the shops were closed, I had to get lots of things by packages. Sometimes it was rather mundane things. I had to get some nails from my garden shed to give it a fix. Other times it was very exciting and very intriguing things. It was always quite exciting when you get a package. Especially if you cannot remember what it is. That sensation. Think about when you open up things, maybe on birthdays or Christmases. How exciting it is to see what's underneath that wrapping paper. That might give us a bit of a clue on how our character might act today. Let's have a look at the text. If you're struggling to see it on this board, and it's not going to put your screens okay, you might want to look at it in our blog. It's on the Year 2 and the Year 3 blog. Unfortunately, I'm in a slightly different classroom today, and our whiteboard isn't quite as clear. Joe and the Package by Abby Davidson Joe crept along to Grandma's room. It was in darkness. She edged the door open and peeked into the empty room. On the bedside table stood a strange package covered in post in strange stamps. Joe held her breath and tiptoed to the table. The package was like a magnet. It seemed to draw her in. Her fingers itched. 
She just had to know what was inside. <gasps> Someone's covered up the next part of a text with a box. Oh, wonder what it could have said. The paper at the edge of the packet was loose. Let's read it one more time. Joe crept along to Grandma's room. It was in darkness. She edged the door open and peeped into the empty room. On the bedside table stood the package covered in strange stamps. Joe held her breath and tiptoed to the table. The package was like a magnet. It seemed to draw her in. Her fingers itched. She just had to know what was inside. The paper at the edge of the packet was loose. What a curious, mysterious packet so far. And the phrase which sticks in my mind straight away is covered in strange stamps. Have a think to yourself, what might that mean if it's covered in strange stamps? What might it tell you about this package? How might it have got to Grandma's room? Where might it have come from? See if you can share me your ideas in our Shout It Out. Remember, try and give me a really thoughtful answer. And don't forget to tr remember our capital letter at the start and full stop at the end. Off we go. joining us. More than Billy Aston joining us from Form 5, keeping me company in the classroom. Oh, there's Lucas. Billy Amy. Cole, good to see you. Connor, Grace, Harrison, Holly and Annabelle, Isaac, Isabel, James, Liliella, Kayant, Lucas, another Lucas. Most popular name in school, it seems Lucy. Molly, Oliver, Phoebe, Poppy, Rogan, Sophia. Great to see you all today. From the postman. So a few people telling me it could be from a different country. So why do you think it's from a different country? May have been delivered at the mail. She doesn't recognise the stamps. Well spotted. Yeah, that's probably why. She doesn't recognise the stamps. I would like to think if it had a picture of a queen's head on it, I'd probably know where it was from. But I wouldn't know all the stamps from all the other countries in the world. Hey. A cup of refreshing tea to get my breath back after my jog through the school. Hey. Is it from America? That's an interesting question, possibly. Interesting idea, really. See what else we can add. I'll give everyone just another few more seconds. What can they add to our discussion? Different stamps, maybe even a different country. Perhaps it come from someone in her family, possibly. Maybe someone who she doesn't usually get parcels from, quite possibly. Okay, just another few moments. Right, from her family, it says Phoebe as well. Has it come from Mexico? Lucas put in his good knowledge from year two of Mexico being another country who studied together, possibly. Have you seen any Mexico stamps? Okay, some good ideas there. Yeah, I think this is a clear one. She probably doesn't know where it's come from. Let's read our article again. Joe crept along to Grandma's room. It was in darkness. What might, what time of day might it be if it was in darkness? Have a think at home and see if Lucas can help me. Lucas, what do you think? I think it's night time. And why? Because it's not normally dark in the mm. When it's dark, sometimes a room can be lit up if you put a light on. So if it's in darkness, what else might that be telling us? 
don't like lights on when they're asleep. Yeah, that's for her sleep. She edged the dolphin. What a beautiful word that is. If I edge a dolphin, I'm only moving a small amount. And peeked into the empty room. On the bedside table stood the package covered in strange stamps. Jo held her breath. I wonder why she's doing that. And tiptoed to the table. I wonder why she's tiptoeing. The package was like a magnet. It seemed to draw her in. Her fingers itched. She just had to know what was inside. The paper at the edge of the packet was loose. So I want to think for me, please. Is Joe meant to be there? Is Joe meant to be in Grandma's room? And if you think she is, or she thinks she isn't, give me a reason why. What are the clues in the text? What does the author tell us? What is a clue that she shouldn't be there? Have a good look at the text again, particularly the first paragraph and the start of the second paragraph. If I was to ask you which clue would you use to tell me that she either should be there or she shouldn't be there, what would you use? Can you find more than one reason? What are the clues that she might not be there if there's something she does? If there's something she feels? What are the key words which tell you that she's possibly not meant to be there? And can you explain why you've picked them as your answer? Get ready to tell me. Should she be there? And why? How do you know? Off you go. Ooh, someone's put held her breath. Why have you chosen held her breath? Why was that telling me she shouldn't be there? Can you give me some more detail for that one? Give me a reason why. Joe crept along to Grandma's room. It was in darkness. Oh, we should have got an answer here from Poppy. She shouldn't be there. Crept meant she is sneaking and doesn't want anyone to know she is there. What a great answer. No, she shouldn't be there. The door was shut and it was really dark and her grandma was sleeping. That's a, I'm not thought the fact the door was shut. Yeah. If it's someone else's room and the door's shut, you shouldn't really go in, should you? Yeah, well done for my little Ella here. She held her breath and tiptoed to the table. She's not making any noise. Yeah. If it didn't matter she was there or not, it wouldn't matter if she made noise or not. If you will, pick on Billy's pick that up. Instead of normally walking in, she held her breath and tiptoed, she was quiet. Instead of doing what she would normally do, she crept, edged the door, people spotted. She held her breath, well spotted. Can you write me a really clear answer with a full stop at start and a capital left at the end? We had lots of spots about your tiptoe. Trying to sneak in somewhere. Think about when you've tiptoed. Have you ever tried to sneak in somewhere? Have you tried to sneak up an old brother or sister to play a trick perhaps? Just to be really quiet when you're not meant to be there. A few more moments, see what else we can get. Lots of great ideas there. Yeah, we should have a really good one that she shouldn't be there. The door is closed for a reason. See, with our lovely, warm mannered children, no, it's, it's easy to spot how she's acting here. Yeah, I think you've got lots of the things I've spotted. I think you've spotted the things I've spotted there, that she is creeping along to Grandma's room. That suggests to me that she's trying her hardest not to be heard. Because if she does wake Grandma, I think she's going to get into trouble. 
fact he's gone in darkness is really important. If you hope to no good, you don't do it in the daytime when everyone can see you. Things in the darkness. I think edged is a really key word here. If you don't swing the door open, what is she afraid of? Someone in class. Why is she only edging the door open? Why is she not swinging it open? It's because like, if you like, open the door, sometimes like, a gust of wind could like, blow on her and wake her up. What is she worried about? Waking grandma. Waking grandma. And she peeps into the room. If you're peeping, it's a little bit different from watching, isn't it? It's a really powerful verb, is peeping. It suggests that you're spying on someone, doesn't it, if you're peeping? Into the empty room. Oh, it looks like Grandma's not there after all. Joe held her breath and tiptoed to the table. Oops, I missed a bit. My bedside table stood the package. Stood it in straight stance. Joe held her breath and tiptoed to the table. Yeah, if you're tiptoeing. It's going a bit wayward, aren't it? If you're tiptoeing, it's clear that something is up to no good if you're trying to do it and holding your breath and trying to sneak in someone's room. I would agree I don't think it's meant to be there. What I want to think about this package. What's special about this? What are the clues that she wants to look at this package? What are the clues in the text? I'm going to give you a, a chance to look at this text. I want to highlight the bits of the text which tell me she's wanting to read it. If you finish that, you might want to write down what you think the missing sentence is using the A tool. So the A tool, which is going to come up on your screen in a second, allows you to write. And the pen tool I've got on my screen here allows me to highlight things. Using the second pen, I can highlight. So I want you to highlight which parts of it are telling me she's desperate to look at this package. And if you finish that, what is the missing sentence? Get ready to have a go. When you think you're done, you can click done in the top right corner so I can see. What are the bits which tell me that this is something she's desperate to see? What is the missing sentence? And if you're really interested in rapid grasping, you might want to use the A2 to annotate why you pick some things out. Just a few minutes to look at that. So why uh, is this text showing me she's desperate to look at it? What other clues in there? Can you draw a highlight to show me? Can you use your A tool? Can you write what the missing sentence might be? If you've done all of that, you might want to use your A tool. Just explain why you highlighted some sections. What's the reason? Why do you think that bit is showing me she's desperate to see what's going on? I want to use my camera, actually. Slanted. Jill crept along to Grandma's room. It was in darkness. She edged the door open and peeped into the empty room. On the bedside table stood the package covered in strange stamps. Jo held her breath and tiptoed to the table. The package was like a magnet. It seemed to draw her in. Her fingers itched. She just had to know what was inside. What she did next. I don't think she completely opened the package. What might she have done? I don't know what I'd be writing. A for the edge, the package was loose, so it has to fit between those two sections. What could a missing sentence or two be?
might be as big as that box, it might be smaller than that box. I've just covered it up for now. He's showed some work there. See how big the wood looking on. Olive and free tea. Creep is a haunted house, he thinks, being Mickey Fraser. I can see that. And he's highlighted the last three sentences as well as the package covered in strange stamps. Let's see how something's going to happen. He's highlighted this last sentence. She just had to know what was inside. I would agree, that's showing that she's desperate to see what's inside. See how Lily Ella's getting on. Yeah, she's highlighted these last three sentences in the paragraph as well. See how Cole's getting along. He's highlighted the package was like a magnet. See how Holly and Annabelle are getting along. She's just changing her mind. See how Phoebe's getting on. Phoebe's looking at some language. He's looking at all See how Lucy's getting on. She's got the package was like a magnet too. Interesting ideas here. I don't know who this person is, I'm afraid, so I can't give him any specific feedback. See how he's getting on. Yeah, Evie's looked at that phrase well, she just had to know what was in the sand. That's his tiptoe into it as well and she knows she probably shouldn't do. Oh great work from Lucas with some annotations on there as well. See how Grace free tea, free tea, free tea is getting on. Okay. Just another moment or two. She needed to know. Sam Logan getting on. Okay. Interesting. There we go. Oh, we've got Lily Ellis, I don't know. See how Kyle's tummy's finished. We've picked out tiptoe, magnet and itch. Okay. Some interesting ideas. Lots of people have picked out these last three paragraphs, these little big sentences here, and I would agree if you picked out these three. The package was like a magnet. Now does, does that mean it's made of steel? Does that mean it keeps connecting to anything metal? It means it's like a magnet. That is a, have a think at home before I say it. It's a simile. Where we compare it to something. It's not an actual magnet made of steel. But it's, it's like a magnet to her. It's like she was being drawn towards it. And that's what the next sentence says. It seemed to draw her in. And it doesn't mean draw. As in paint a nice picture of her. It's the other type of draw, where I bring something towards me. If you're drawn into something, if I showed a really interesting picture on the board, your eyes would be drawn towards it. So, two phrases which don't exactly mean what they say. She's not actually a magnet, she's not made of metal. The present's not actually a magnet, but it's like a magnet, because it seems to draw her in. Her fingers itched. Do you think she's been dipping them in itching powder? Uh, when you've got itchy fingers, it's because you're desperate to do something. Uh, what are her fingers desperate to do? Someone in the, in the class tell me. Uh, like, touch it and get it, like, to see what's inside. Yeah, to, to touch it, it and to pick it up. That's what the next sentence says. She just had to know what was inside. So all those sentences there are telling me that she's desperate to look at it. But we're looking at it from different ways. Package was like a magnet telling me it, she was attracted towards it, like magnets can attract. It seemed to draw her in. 
So he seemed to be wanting to get closer and closer towards it. As if it was this amazing thing which had its own power. Now it didn't of course, it's just a package. But it seemed to be like that. Uh, her fingers itched. And how desperate she was to touch it. She just had to see what was inside. And for me, my missing sentence would be something like, she began to pick the package up. Or with trembling fingers, she reached forward for the package. Or she went for a closer look. Because that would fit her noticing the paper at the edge of the packet was loose. Some great work today. Are you ready for a quiz? We're going to have a bit of a monster quiz based on this text. Make sure you read the questions very, 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 very carefully. Because if you get the answer right first time, you'll get more marks when guessing. Because if you guess, you get a time penalty, so you've got to wait before the next question, and you'll lose marks for your team. Let's see if we're going to which team today. Divide into some teams. Let's have teams of eight teams today. Teams, but teams of three or four. Hopefully you can see on your screen what team you're in. When I start, you need to answer the questions as quickly as you can. <laughs> Are we ready? Remember, read the questions carefully. Off you go. Let's see who's winning today. Warden Rogan, first question right. Lucy, Phoebe, Grace, excellent work. Poppy, well done. Oh, quite a few of me wrong. Make sure we're reading very carefully. Warden well Liliella. Ian, well done. Lucas. And the other Lucas. And Lucy. Oliver. Billy, Kaya, Texan, Warden from Cole and James, Ashton. Oh, it's getting close now. I think Frostbiters in the lead, Warden Frostbiters. Heat Scorch is just behind them. But who is this coming up on the side? It is the Fire dry Divers. And the Boom Boxers. Ah, uh, closing up as well. It's getting very close over the top. I think the heat scorchers are pulling out in front now. Arden Rogan, another point for the heat scorchers there. Oh, it's getting very close now. Oh, a few wrong from the heat scorchers. It might allow. Oh, well done Heat Scorchers. First place. Well done to you guys. If you're in school, you can absolutely call in one of your stickers. If you're at home, you can have a thumbs up. Excellent. Who's going to come second? Oh, it's very close. Mighty Monster Boxers now has taken a storming lead now to second place. It could be fire drivers, it could be frost biters, it could be the snow throwers, it's so close at the end. Oh, fire drivers only mark it two ways and you think it's right. It's fire drivers, frost biters in third place. Okay. Well stop it there. Well done. Let's take a look at our winning team. So, Warden Heat Scorchers, Fire Drivers, more accurate but slightly slower, Frostbite is even more accurate. Let's take a look at the winning answers. So, Joe is a boy. That's false because it tells us she already through the text. 
closest word to slightly open, this is how she opened the door. Is it stood, held, edged, or itched? Well, she edged the door, and it went to when she slightly opened it, so our closest word there is edged. Closest in meaning to, she had to know what was inside. This is what we were looking at right at the end. Because we had three sentences right at the end, it said a similar meaning. But it was like a magnet. She had to know what was inside and her fingers itched. Another one I could have had there, but I didn't have written down was it seemed to draw her in. It was in darkness, it's got a slightly different meaning. The other one we got is, Joe crept along to Grandma's room. Now, she probably did it for the same reason. I'm going to take the fingers off. She probably did it for the same reason, because she had to know what was inside, but the closest in meaning was her fingers itched. Whereas the package, most people got this one right in Grandma's room, but for some reason it said the kitchen. So if it said they got that one wrong, there must have been a mistake with the quiz. Jo wasn't interested in the package, that was false. She clearly wanted to see what was in the package. Her fingers itched, that meant she was curious about the package. Definitely have something on her fingers. A lot of people said she was creeping. Your fingers wouldn't itch just because you were creeping. And Joe's fingers were not magnets. They weren't actually magnets. That were just a simile used by the author. Joe didn't want Grandma to know she was in the room was true. Grandma was in the room. A lot of people said this was true, but remember it said the room was empty. So Grandma wasn't in this room. And the packet had come from somewhere Joe didn't know. That was true because she didn't recognise the strange symbols on it. Very well done, thank you for your hard work today. We've got a few changes to our lessons coming up. So tomorrow, we've got Mrs Shea for year two and three. She'll be teaching a writing lesson at 11 o'clock. And then on Wednesday, it will be Mr Louis for singing at, no, not singing, sorry, Mr Louis for music at quarter past one. And then we've got Mrs Shea again on Thursday and Mr Louis again on Friday. So a very busy week, lots to do. Thank you ever so much for your learning today. We are going to leave you with this suggestion. Have a look at something you've read this week and maybe tell us about it on your blog. Bye bye for now everybody. Bye bye.